This is the Criterion Creeps podcast. And tonight we're talking about Les Dames du Bois de Ballon. AKA Can you say that again? Ladies of the Park. Oh, okay. From 1945. Directed by Robert Bresson. The synopsis brought to us from the Letterboxd. This unique love story based on a novelette by Denis Diderot and mm. with dialogue written by Jean Cocteau follows the maneuverings of a society lady as she connives to initiate a scandalous affair between her aristocratic ex-lover and a prostitute. With his what? second feature film, director Rob Bresson was already forging his singularly brilliant filmmaking technique as he mm-hmm. created a moving study of the power of revenge and the strength of true love. Who wrote this, Jarrett? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that doesn't really say much about the movie. Why did they say singular? Because that's how you communicate importance. That's not, this movie never struck me as a, a singular I don't, yeah, yeah. vision. Singularly. No, his. He forged it. Yeah, okay. Anyways. Yeah, I, don't, I don't get that. It's Ladies of the Park. Okay. Hey, hey, look. It's the return of Jacques Cocteau. Last scene in that, those Orpheus mm-hmm. movies, directing them. Mm-hmm. This time he's writing the screenplay. You know, we all remember Jacques Cocteau's writing. So well, that's his most memorable thing. Well, didn't he write Beauty and the Beast? Yeah, he he directed that too. And uh, but we we all talk about the writing in those movies, right? Um, I feel like you saw him in a different st- sense in this movie, and I'll get there. But uh, yeah, did he write movies? I, he wrote his own, I suppose. This movie is credited to be written by Denny Diderot. Yeah. That's the that's he who wrote the uh, the novelette. A novelette. Yep. <laughs> so this was Robert Bresson's first appearance in this creep. Okay. And this oh. was his second feature film. Do you know about that Robert Bresson, RJ? I know he's got that movie you were to cover is uh, a crown? Pickpocket? A man escaped. A man, uh, yeah, a man escaped. What is, he ma- what is this guy making? A rope with his hands in the poster? Uh, he's tying rope because he's going to break out of uh, jail. Well, it looks like a big garlic knot. He's, he's I don't in, know what uh, to tell you. Yeah, he's a POW. Oh, he's going to get a, he's going to get killed by those Germans. Wow. Oh. So and then he made pickpocket. Things of those know. things of those ilk. We're, we're going to be uh, encountering sure. him in the down the road. Okay. Uh, what did what did Jean Luc Godard have to say about Rob Bresson? Well, I don't care. He once wrote, "He is the French cinema." As Dostoevsky is the Russian novel and Mozart is German music. Mozart was German? I thought that dude was from Kentucky. (laughs) Got to watch your Amadeus tapes again. I have. I thought that took place in Kentucky. (laughs) Well. (sighs) What? (laughs) Yeah. So I've never seen this uh, movie. This have is, you seen Robert Brisson's other movies? I though? have. I've seen several of his movies. The and big ones? Quite, yeah, I've seen his big boys. I, I, I like that uh, Al Hazard Balthazar, contrary to other people who seem to really dump on his movies. I, I like him. I like his stuff. I like his jam. Uh, mm-hmm. Earlier on, we were talking about that Paul Schrader. We were talking about Paul him Reiser? and, his, and uh, old uh, Mishima. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, he wrote a book talking about Ozu and Brisson and mm-hmm. uh, Dreyer. Carl yes. Theodore Dreyer and the transcendental film style. And this movie doesn't really have any of those things going on at all. This is a more of a building block movie for him. And uh, I will say that on a technical level, this movie is pretty impressive for 1945, considering, you know, France is still occupied by the Germans at this moment mm. when this movie would have been coming out. Uh, unless it came out later, maybe I've got that wrong. But either, either it's either a movie made during occupation or during the war still happening, or it's immediately after the post-war. So it kind of goes along with that Beauty and the Beast uh, mm-hmm. thing that you mentioned earlier, where that movie is also like coming out of, uh, you know, war, a devastating war. So and it, sure. it, and you wouldn't think of anything. You it never gets brought up. There's no mention of the war, how it's going. There's nothing like that. It doesn't feel particularly. French or anything like that. Uh, this conversation got brought up before about these types of movies being, uh, any type of movie being made like uh, Children of Paradise. 
if you remember that. Marcel. Uh, I remember that that was a movie we watched for the Criterion Creep Initiative. <laughs> I remember that was also uh, Maurice Yankowar's uh, favorite movie, was it not? It, it, correct. And if people don't know who he is, read a book, as Jarrett would say. Damn right. Get, read out, a, get out there. Live a get little. Out, yeah, live a little. Read a book. It's, try, it's called Reading, Honey. Why don't you try it out sometime? Am I right? That's right. I'm trying my best Jared impression. Yeah. Did it work? No. Okay. You got, you got a lot of work there to do, buddy. Continuing on. So continuing on. So yeah, uh, this is definitely lesser Bresson, we'll, okay. uh, we'll say. It's very much, he had this project and he made it with as much razzle-dazzle as he was going to be doing. But his interests, when you watch his later movies, are completely in a different place. Okay. Uh, so this movie it picks up with uh, Helen. Uh, who is Ooh. being told the by her older male friend that her relationship with this Jean guy is a fraud. And she decides to test those waters by saying, you know, I don't think things are going to work out with us. I'm just not feeling it. And then she gets served by getting confirmation that he feels exactly the same way, which really uh, mm. chuffs her. And mm-hmm. uh, we get this really great kind of moment with her coming around the corner out of a doorway, leaning against the wall with tears in her eyes. And then when uh, this Jean guy exits and opens up the door, the light from the hallway comes onto her face. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, it's really good stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, you see her being crushed. And then you see her begin to plot. And then she explains, uh, exposits even, that she will have her revenge. Uh, yes. She immediately transitions to a, um, a cabaret where mm-hmm. we get introduced to, I, I kind of describe as like a fallen stage star, Agnes. It's kind of like the the tale of uh, these these young women that go to LA, to Hollywood to become stars, and it doesn't quite work out that way. And maybe they start shaking their tits on the Sunset Boulevard. They do what, Jared? And on top of just like any uh, young girl okay. that comes out to Los Angeles to make her break, she has her mother who assists her and kind of like, I guess, facilitates her prostitution. <laughs> The, excuse me, <laughs> what movie were you watching? Uh, this movie. Well, I I feel like the mother's like not. She she's doesn't there. like she's, it, she's kind but of like, like she doesn't a, object to she's it. She's not right? a pimp. She's not a man. She kind of cleans she's up. There. She's there. She helps. She kicks out the Johns once they're done. Yeah, yeah. Like there's a scene where oh, she's like, man. "Get out of here, you oh man, bums!" The, all those dudes. Man, that seems creepy. <laughs> that seems, yeah. I, as soon as I saw that, I was like, "Oh, this is Jarrett." Oh, I yeah. Get it. So we get this scene with Agnes, who's like doing her big whole dance number. And then we have mm-hmm. Helen, who's like looking at her like like almost like a predator does. Like, yes, you'll do <laughs> just fine. And then we get mm-hmm. um, a scene where she like has all these flowers that she gets from suitors. And she's just like, fuck, every single day I hate plants because you have to keep care of them. It's like, this this is crap. And I'm like, yeah, I hate plants. <laughs> uh, we don't have a plant in the house. You know why? Why? Cats knock them over, man. And poison for kitties sometimes. Most of them are. Most of them are poison, yeah. And uh, or if they're not poison, they'll eat the whole thing and throw up everywhere, and then they just get sick. And you know, I don't want. I don't, I'm not into that. You don't want none of that business. Yeah. Uh, so then we get a scene with Agnes. She's now like dancing with uh, a potential John, basically, who starts like just fucking nibbling at her neck, just kind of uh, she's uh. having a lick and. Tongue of those uh, of the, her shoulders, and she's kind of like, okay. "Nah, I'm good. Yeah, no, I'm good, dude." And then he uh, takes a big drag of his cigarette and just fucking blows it in her face. And he's just like, "How do you like that?" And then she takes his cigarette and puts it out on his face. <laughs> and then he fucking well, slaps her. And then he slaps her. Oh. And uh, then we get this weird like tableau where they freeze. <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. so. And then uh, Helen, or is it not Helen leaves? The scene kind of transitions from out of that room and they're just in a frozen spot. And then um, her mother and Helen go like, hey, hey, how's it going? I guess things haven't worked out so well for you. I thought you were supposed to be in the opera. I thought you were supposed to be in the show business. And here we are. She's like, yeah, ran out of money, having to start selling furniture and (laughs) it's not not going too well. And then you hear like these weird sounds in the background. uh, And it's like all these men kind of banging on a door. And then you're you're like, oh. There's like five dudes in tuxedos who are all banging at the door where uh, Agnes is like run off to and hid. And you're like, what? What? That's this is weird. And but there's mm-hmm. like, it's like no biggie. It's no big deal. And then RJ, these ladies, they move to a, a place that's just off the park. 
And uh, and then it kind of turns into evil Pygmalion. Uh, that's a pretty good way to put it, actually. Yeah. Yeah, evil Pygmalion. Yeah, so it's evil Pygmalion. Instead of like a, a weird dude with a young woman, it's kind of this like, like fine woman who's like yeah. using this poor woman this poor wretch sounds like a to, Batman uh, villain. To, to get back uh, at a, a rich asshole. Sure. He's like, not even like, he's just a dick. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I have, I have opinions. I'll, I'll wait until okay. you, uh, you, you keep going. And I'll then, wait. so all that's all the setup. And then the rest of the movie just plays out exactly the way you'd expect. Mm-hmm. She, she introduces them. The whole idea is that he doesn't know that she comes from, like from, squalor from nothing from like mm-hmm. oh and she's doing these things on the side <laughs> isn't that doing gonna, what kind of things Jared? sucking dick for money oh my god <laughs> having I never sex thought you'd actually having it. sex with men for money can oh you imagine god. the type of low life you'd have to be oh you're the worst type of human being in the world that's that's like that's oh, the I, that's the helen that's the helen worldview and so uh yeah, the whole thing is like concealing that, and saying, "Oh no, you can't tell him until that happens. You got to get married, though. You know, your life will get better." But it's like it's going along. It's all set up. It's all set up, and there's maybe some like moments where it's like, "Oh, maybe he's gonna find out." But oh no, it all goes according to plan, and they get married. And then finally, it's like, "Hey, dude, guess what? <laughs> You've just debased yourself." <laughs> mm-hmm. And then poor Agnes, she's just like so a faint of heart, and that she's this like victim of like all this crap, <laughs> and then she's like, "Oh, I might die." I might die now mm-hmm. because of this, but she's resuscitated by true love. <laughs> well, hasn't that ever happened to you? Nope, it hasn't, RJ. It hasn't. Well, I happened. feel bad for you, dude. It has not happened. I've been to... brought back from the brink many times yeah. from uh, true love's kiss from guys like Jean. Well, I mean, guys like Jean, but not guys like Jean. Do you know what I mean? I feel yeah. Not guys totally like Jean, like better looking dudes. Yeah. yeah. So. I watched this movie through and okay. by the end of it, I was like, I missed something. So I kind of rewatched the first 20 minutes and I went, oh, okay, this is better than I was thinking it was. But mm-hmm. at the same time, it's, it's very much like a, a piffle. It's just kind of like, it's a what Jared? A, a, I've, 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 I've used this word before and I believe you said, what, what Jared? And it's a, it's a well, piffle. You, it's kind of why, like, a, why do you keep using it then? <laughs> one day it'll stick with you. It's mm. it's just a movie that's there. It uh it doesn't really leave its mark. I don't think anyone would argue that it's anything more than it is. Again, uh this kind of fits into those like things where yeah, there's some really nice technical filmmaking going on. Uh but the story is very like doesn't do anything special and uh okay. I don't know if there's anything to me. There's not much in okay. the telling mm-hmm. that goes beyond what I just kind of laid out. And uh, I think the first bit, like the first 20 minutes I think are a lot more interesting than the rest because I mean obviously I was able to talk about those in a little bit more depth but uh, I don't know that's all I that's my feeling on this what do you think RJ piffle noun and exclamation nonsense quote it's absolute piffle to say that violence is okay synonyms nonsense rubbish garbage clock strap balderdash blather Blether, moonshine, moonshine, and more. That's how I mean it. Moonshine. So maybe moonshine. It's, maybe piffle's harsher than I thought. I thought it was like you know it sounds piffle sounds light. Did you mean it in the claptrap way and not the this the is garbage clap way? Trap. <laughs> Total claptrap. Yeah. I I picture you saying that more than anything. I mean it's no summertime, RJ. Few things are summertime. That's a great movie, and uh, one day you'll come around on that. When I have to rewatch movies I don't like, you're gonna have to rewatch Summertime. Maybe it'll warm your cold, dead heart. Maybe. So you want to hear about La Dame de Bou de, Bo- de Boulna? Yeah. I speak perfect French, by the way. Seamless. We live in Canada, and we speak French. La Dame de Bou de Boulna. I had zero expectations, Jarrett. Yep. As I think we both did. Uh, this Brisson guy. I own this DVD. Why? <laughs> Because it's a Brisson movie, and I was buying up these right. Brissons, but I had, had not watched it because based on the – after I realized, I'm like, oh, this movie's like early of his stuff, and I've heard that it's nothing like his later stuff that I do like, so eh, I'll get around to it, and look look what happened. I got around to it. Well, I watched it on the Criterion channel. 
channel, Jarrett, mm-hmm. which we've mentioned before, but I don't know if we've ever mentioned it in the proper where uh, watching it on a fire stick is easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. Yeah. But uh, as soon as I tried to get stream, uh, screenshots on my uh, computer, it's a fucking nightmare. I, sw- I swear I had um I went to like the timestamp that I wanted to take the screenshot from and it was loading for I left it in the background with the sound on. So uh, like while I was working and I was like, mm-hmm. well, I'll hear when it starts 35 minutes in. It was still loading. What? So I was just and I, I'm hardwired into Ethernet. What? That sucks. <laughs> well, I don't. Uh, I don't blame a friend of the show, Oliver Granger, for uh, canceling his subscription because uh, I was. If I had to wait thirty minutes of buffering, I'd be like, "Fuck this! What is it? Nineteen ninety two? Like what? What is this horse shit?" Anyways, just thought I would mention. I watched it on the channel. It was there uh, a rare occurrence. I wish next week's were on uh, the channel, but that's not. Uh, it's too nice for us, I guess. Mm-hmm. I know listen, listener all, Oliver, he had enough. He, he called uh-huh. it quits over this shit. I wonder if other yes. people are having problems. Well, yeah, I mean, and that's what I that's why I brought it up is because like on the Fire Stick, because I know you watch Criterion Channel on Fire Stick also. I do. I've never had a problem. It's never stalled. Yep, it's uh, never like went blurry or anything like that. Yep. But as soon as I try to go on desktop to get screenshots. It's a complete fucking nightmare. So, I don't know. I don't know what it is, man. Anyways, La Dame, de Bou, de Boulin. Uh I actually kind of like this movie. Uh, I was really surprised by it. Um, so, I think this movie's got a lot going on for it. Uh, number one, 1945. It's pretty old. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Uh, I like this movie, I think, Jared, because it is the exact level of petty that I strive to be in my life mm. where I find this is like, this is Jerry Seinfeld in a movie where it's the kind of thing where, and I'm saying that out of respect and love because I watched a lot of Seinfeld and I think I'm about as petty as he is. I don't have Seinfeld bucks where I can be that petty, mm. but it's what I would like to be where it's like someone scorns you once and you're like, okay, all right. Okay. And then you just, you set up this elaborate ruse to completely dismantle their life. And I know what you're saying. It's like, well, is it that big of a deal to be married to a prostitute? Is, is it not like any a man in the iron mask style revenge? Yes, plot? absolutely. I would love that. That's what I would With like. Starring to Jerry Seinfeld. Kind of, but like, would he be the man in the mask or would he be like Jeremy Irons? Okay. Is Jeremy Irons in that? Uh, some, right. In some version. Yes. Probably. Maybe the one even with Leonardo. Probably. Uh, so I, I really like that. Um, where I think I liked her petty revenge scheme is what I mean. Uh, <laughs> it's like today's standards. It's like, well, the, like the whole climax is that it's like you married a loose woman. You fool. You dumb fool. And it's like today's. And everybody, standard. all your rich friends know. I, I, OK, so I actually thought that was that part was amazing to it where it's just like. It's like, okay, you married this gigantic whore. This she trollop. Was, this trollop, this tramp, they call her. <laughs> Jesus. And it's like, okay, okay. And he's and he's like, he's like, okay, well, that sucks. And uh, he's like, I'm going to go back inside. And she's like, oh, you're going inside? No problem. Just so you know, every guy at your wedding has visited her for money, for sex. And then it, it, it's just like, oh, like, so I think that kind of just it just layering on all this this revenge and petty squabble and stuff. I I love that. I'm so just, you know what I'm realizing? This movie belongs to be on my uh, movies that would have been better if Jess Franco directed them. Probably, but I mean, what movie wouldn't have? Well, um, there's there's certain there's ones that would there's ones that would be improved. So, um, well, I mean, well, that's. Uh, words words are tough yes uh anyways my point i guess jared is even though by today's standards the revenge plot seems silly because it's like well who gives a shit uh today uh 1945 it's like fuck it probably broke that guy's heart but that guy was a huge piece of shit and that's another reason why i like this movie because i felt like he had it coming the whole time uh so i 
I like this movie. I don't love this movie or anything like that. I think it's pretty good. Um, there's a few things. I thought this guy completely deserved it because he is the worst kind of piece of shit. He has this willful ignorance uh, about things where he's just like, he's like, I don't want to know it. I don't want to know it. She even like the girl even tries to tell him. She's like, hey, I just want you to know I used to be a hooker. And he's like, I don't want to know it. You are this beautiful flower. Nothing could ever change my opinion of you. And she's like, hey, I'm trying to tell you. And he's like, nothing could ever change it. And then it's like, hey, that girl used to be a hooker. And then he's like, he's like, I feel so betrayed. And he's like so mad at the consequences. It's like, no, this is your fault, dude. He's like, because he's such a piece of shit. But he's also like that really forceful guy where it's like, don't come around here. And then he like just forces himself into their apartment. And he's like, so this is where she lives, huh? He's like, so this is where she sits, huh? And he's just like smelling the furniture. You're like, ugh. Like, this guy's fucking gross. So I think that adds to it for me because so he's a real seat sniffer. Every time, yeah, exactly. Every time he was on screen, I was like, "This guy fucking grosses me out so, so much." So there, there, him. There, there's him, but then there's like this Helen Broad. It's like she was cool with but me, she, but, but she was into this guy. She was fine with this guy being weird until suddenly he wasn't into her anymore, and now she's going to use another human being to like fuck Seinfeld over a guy. Ask. It's like who's who's the real monster, RJ? Not me. I know that much. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I know. I know Helen. Uh, Helene, whatever. I know you could deem her as the villain of this because I guess she is. But uh, as I said, I'm on board with her revenge scheme. <laughs> I totally embrace it. And I think it's great. I endorse it. I think more people should do elaborate petty schemes to get back at people. So don't ever cross me, Jarrett, because I know where you live. Mm-hmm. And I will do very upsetting things to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyways, I was on board with this. Is it like the most exciting and entertaining shit in 2019? Probably not. It's like you said, you kind of guess where this is going and you guess that this guy's going to be a complete fucking creepy piece of shit. And he's like, Oh, he's like Cinderella. Oh, her handwriting is so pretty. You're just like, Oh, gross. You kind of guess where it's going to go. It's not the most exciting where it's not like he sounds like a real, real zing. Pe- he's real Pepe Le Pew. He is. He is really forcing mwah, himself. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Mm. So it's not the most exciting. And by today's standards, it's like, well, I don't know if this is the worst thing to find out that your wife used to be in the sex trade because, you know, that's just part of life now. So no big deal. Um, but for the time, you know, I, I think this movie's got some qualities, Jared. I think it's got some good qualities. Speaking of Cocteau, Jean Cocteau, Mm -hmm. director of one of our favorite movies, Beauty and the Beast. Uh, I thought there was one Cocteau moment in this movie. And, uh, I don't, I don't like, I I know he did screenplay, whatever, but I think the, uh, the scene where she tries to pin the note to his car and then the note flies off and lands back on her. Oh, yeah. I was like, that seems like a cock two thing. The magic note? Yeah. The magic note. Cock two. Not Dakota. Not David Dakota. I know how you, people would confuse him with Jean Cock two. They're very similar in their filmmaking. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I thought that was a, a good Jean Cock two moment. So anyways, Jared, I thought this movie was okay. I'm really on board with the level of pettiness of the people involved in this movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, is it great? No. <laughs> but I mean I don't feel bad watching it where if you go to my ranked list and anything under 100 anything on page 2 of my ranked list I probably wish I didn't watch so <laughs> anyway, I don't feel bad watching this movie that's a good quality right nice <laughs> I mean I know that doesn't sound good but in terms of what you and me are doing that's probably like a, a big stamp of approval yeah right yeah. Right. Hmm. Yeah. So it's not bad. It's not bad. Cool. You got anything else to say about this uh, La Dame du Bois? Du Bois? Not really. Well, I think I handled it pretty good. Mm-hmm. You want to hear about who, you... who hates the, these this ladies? 
I mean, I'm sure some people do. I I don't. Yeah, I mean, lay, yeah, lay it on me. Well, we got some uh, a return. Really, Sha Wu Jing. Oh, that's a repeat offender. That person's been on this podcast like four or five times. At least three that I can At think least of. Three. So this is a half star because I think that's all uh, this person does is half stars on Criterion's. Uh, I'm seeing this. Okay, you ready? Yeah, keep going. Okay. Yeah, hit it. Wait, so he says he doesn't like his lover anymore, so she decides to trick him into marrying a prostitute? What the fuck? (laughs) Too slow, flat, and uninteresting. Doesn't have the elements that made Bresson's later work so great. To be honest, I was so unengaged during the film, I had a hard time paying attention. I have a hard time paying attention to Sha Wu Jing's ratings in general. As you mentioned. Half stars and five stars, I remember. All they have, not even five stars. They only have three five-star movies. Yeah. Seven Samurai, The Godfather, and Empire Strikes Back. They have 455 half-star reviews. Nice. So that's that's all they do. It's just half-star reviewing movies, which it's a shtick for sure. I mean, they watch the movie. They do watch it and they rate it. Yeah. So they just gave what we're going to be covering in two months. Ali fear eats soul. They gave that half a star. So they'll probably be on the podcast again in two months. Hooray. Woo. John Castro, one and a half star. Oh, since I started watching through the something list, something that constantly crops up for me is the feeling of holy shit. I can't imagine someone watching X in the year. At y. It's baked mm. into the mythos of things like The Wizard of Oz and Breathless. It hits you like a truck when you see something like Bigger Than Life or All Quiet on the Western Front. And when something ends up seeming lame, it's the easiest devil's advocate position to take in something's favor. Forbidden Planet and Land Without Bread directly come to mind for those. This mm. one I can 100% imagine being shown in 1945, but I have no idea what the people walking out would take away from it. If they truly bought into the central romance, really? If they really sympathetically lashed onto Helen's revenge plot, really? I didn't see the <laughs> allegorical connection to Vichy France and still don't really beyond the most service level false promises aspect where it goes from there without becoming incredibly muddy eludes me. Muddy. Yeah, I I don't even... I, I never really encountered anyone mentioning that one, even in the essay for this movie that I read. Uh, mm-hmm. It's like, they don't even mention it. It seems like the person's like, this movie's got some real great craft, the way that they like uh, a film critic can spin a bunch of words together to make yeah. it sound like greater than Hand it is. Waving. But then they go, uh, that's more of a, a spun. I'm spinning. You're spinning? But, uh, I, I say that. I say hand waving. Yeah. Oh, like Al Jolson from The Jazz Singer. Uh, sure. So, yeah, this political level of like false promises and being like, huh, turns out that deal was a bad one. I tricked you. It's like, no, it doesn't work. It doesn't hold. I don't, I don't get that. It's that's not what this movie's about. Yeah. I don't see that really either, no. but I mean, so here's the thing. John Castro isn't the worst dude. Uh, I mean, they have some bad takes like they gave night of the hunter five stars. They gave hereditary five stars and Solaris five stars. So those are some bad takes. But they also gave Barton Fink five stars. That's a good take. Uh, half star reviews are strange. Like Mac and Me, Funny People, which is actually a very bad movie. Uh, but next week's Creep, Dog Star Man, half a star. Oh, shit. I am so That's, excited. I'm so excited. That is well, – I, I, I can't, can't do I, the who hates for that for that week. Like <laughs> – I, I, I can't we'll, wait. We'll get there. I, I can't so, wait for desist film. <laughs> my uh, my point, Jarrett, is uh, this person doesn't have the worst taste, but they also gave Mother three stars and Midsummer four stars, which seems like a bad take. Hey, that's out this week for us, buddy. Midsummer? Yeah. What do you mean? It's in the mill. Where are we going to go? I, I don't know. <sighs> oh, that means he's going by himself. I don't guys. know. Uh, finally. Two stars, Macintas. Macintas? Yeah. Okay. In Brisson terms, an irredeemable failure, a complete rebuttal of his ascetic principles. When judged on its own terms, however, entirely adequate. <laughs> there we go. See, maybe that's, that's like when I think of Piffle, I think of entirely adequate. 
but quite entirely. Yeah, but your piffle was talking about things that were bad. Works well as a melodrama, piffle. due in large part to the cathartic final scene, which trans- mm-hmm. transcends the trite drama of the preceding acts. There are traces of greatness here, so on those grounds alone, this deserves at least one viewing. As opposed to what? Not watching like five it. Five viewings. One no, or not seeing it. Zero viewings. Mm-hmm. You you owe this film a viewing, RJ, and you've done it. You, I did it. You punched your card. I told you I liked the one time I watched it. Yeah, I watched this movie one and a quarter times. Good, good for you. No, we did it together. Together we watched there, it two there, and a half there, times. There are things that like I liked more. Uh, yeah. Watching it immediately after watching it. That's a, sure. That's always a plus. Yeah, I mean, you can't always do it, but sometimes you do, and it works, right? Darn it. Hey, Mazinta is weird. They have zero five-star reviews, but they have 1,000 one-star reviews. Ooh. For only... So they have 2,800 films logged, and then 1,000 of them are one-star reviews. Bad, hot, bad takes, Spider-Verse one-star and then Mulholland Drive and uh, Fire Walk with me three stars. So it's like you can't really take this person seriously. Yeah, you can't, Jared. I don't take anyone seriously, especially online. I don't, even, I don't even listen to what you say when exactly. we're podcasting. See, now you're now you're getting it. Uh, I've always had that opinion. There you go. A lot of French people are reviewing this movie. Hey, I'm uh, looking in oh, the who oh, hates. I wonder how they pronounce the title. La de Dobo. I speak very good French. Uh, very good. Very good. Very good. Uh, you got any more thoughts on this here flick? I think it's all right. Yeah, it's fine. I it's, don't think it's a bad movie. Yeah. I think it's a the thing is I. It's inoffensive. Yeah, it's fine. I like how petty it is. Yeah. Just so, yeah. fuck them. Man, you, they, if it really wanted to be petty, though, it could have gone. It could have got pettier. It got worse, but I mean, so when was a. Was this post code? This is French, so it is not. So sub- it doesn't. It, it is not subject to the code. I don't know those things, so I'll just take your word for it. Yeah, now, this movie doesn't isn't particularly super sexy, though. I mean, it's got that cabaret dance. There's nothing sexy in this movie. Yeah, nothing sexy. Except that lady wears a really cool hat at one point. Pretty boss. What do you know about cool hats? I don't wear hats, and that's the coolest hat of them all. Your head looks weird in hats. Check and mate. Woo! After the break. Huh? I don't know. Um, RJ is going to save me through the power of love. It's not the first time. <laughs> <laughs> 